Hello, this is Calvin Idol. Welcome to The Lavender Table, a web-based talk show for and about the LGBT community. And now, let's keep the conversation going with your host, Gary Elgin. today is Rick Staples. Officer Staples is a Knox County Sheriff's Deputy, a mentor, a man of faith, and presently a candidate for Knoxville City Council running in the 4th District. I'm very happy to welcome him to the Lavender Table. Rick, thank you very much for sitting down with us. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Rick, let's start out by a little personal history. Where were you born and raised? Uh, born and raised here in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, Holston Hills area, uh, East Knoxville, uh, student of Chihaui, uh Spring Hill, and uh, Holston High School Warriors, which is now junior high school. But uh, I'm just an East Knoxville uh, fellow. I read something in your bio material that really made me stop and smile. You say that your parents taught you life is too short to sit around and dream you need to work hard to succeed. Right. Uh, you can be a doer or somebody that talks. Uh, in my uh, life and what I'm going to try to bring the city council, especially as somebody that will listen and do, every idea that we have is very doable. But growing up, my parents were action-oriented. Uh, my father worked for city schools. My mother became a successful small businesswoman, and she took that seriously, and that kind of... Uh, sculptured my uh, work ethic and going forward with that motto of being a doer, not a talker. So, Tell us how your faith has informed your life. Uh, being raised uh, at Tabernacle Baptist Church, now at New Hope Baptist Church here in Knoxville. Um, from my line of faith, it's about service and humility and uh, service in the community despite yourself, seeing the greater need for the greater good. Um, I go with that motto in my heart and just try to look for areas where I can plug in with my small skill set and enhance the situation and make, make life better for people, not just myself. In the South, there's a perception of intolerance when it comes to diversity. Yes. Where do you think Knoxville stands with diversity? Knoxville's a unique city. In some areas, you'll see that we're quite diverse and unique. Uh, Knoxville's made up of a, a lot of different cultures. But then in some pockets, you see an old way of thinking, an old mold uh, that we need to move past to really turn Knoxville into a southern metropolis that she should be. So I think uh, my winning that city council seat uh, be a step in the right direction to enhance some of the culture that we have in the area and also expose that culture because it's all positive. On your campaign website, www.teamrickstaples.com, you have all of the vital issues of your campaign. You know you're never going to get anywhere telling everybody where you stand on everything. Well, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, especially nationally, locally, uh, as well as in the state, uh, people are, are want to trust their government more. Uh, I'm trying to earn that trust by being somebody's being straightforward. Uh, not only that, have accessibility and accountability. Okay, and if you're going to be around the people you're serving more, you're definitely not going to lie to them. So uh, we're spelling out who we are right in the beginning so people can know what we stand for so they'll know who they're supporting. One of the first things on your list is preserving cultural heritage. Yes. I know this is close to your heart. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, like, for instance, the Beck Cultural Center, it's just not about African-American history. It's about Knoxville's history. Knoxville's history is very rich. It's very diverse. We have a lot of arts and crafts here. Uh, we have a lot of people who uh, led the way in architecture with poetry. And we need to expose those things. And just really, Knoxville, she's beautiful. 
and expose that beauty. Uh, show it to the world. Don't hide it here. Nestle it away. Uh, introduce it. We have every major interstate in the nation running here. We should increase tourism. I really like what they're doing with Visit Knoxville and want to support that and some of the things we're doing with a lot of different parades, even the Gay Pride Parade. Let's, let's uh, support that and boost that up and get a lot of people to visit our city and see how unique we are. Now you mentioned that. Uh, would you be willing to make a recommendation to the Knoxville Tourism and Sports Corporation to budget money to specifically target the LGBT community? I think there's nothing wrong with that. That would be wise as we uh, try to go forward in competing for uh, conventions that are in a southeastern region area. I think uh, budgeting money towards that will help boost our economy uh, and moving our city forward. Okay. It has been estimated that the buying power of the U.S. LGBT people is in the neighborhood of $800 billion annually. Did you say $800 billion? Yes, sir. Team Rick Staples, we're taking donations right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but it's important to realize that everybody's dollar is value, and not to separate that dollar, but uh, take care of your citizens, uh, your taxpayers, and, uh, and uh, kind of have an open mind about what we need to do moving forward. Rick, where does Knoxville stand with its environmental report card? Pass or fail? <sighs> We're at a C average. And the reason I'm going to say that is because currently we have a city mayor that's moving forward trying to make Knoxville a more cleaner city. She needs support doing that, going green with some of the energies. We're also pushing uh, from my platform to have LEED certified uh, businesses and developments come into the area and help them with abatements. Now, the reason we're at a C is because we failed historically with some of the industries that we brought in the area, uh, ruining our horticulture by cutting a lot of the trees down to clean our air. So Knoxville probably has some of the worst air quality uh, in the nation, uh, as told and witnessed by allergies that people have and uh, people that move into the area. But we can correct that. Uh, support some of the initiatives that we already have in place uh, and then going further with it uh, with development and, and going green. So uh, we can get that up to a B and uh, hopefully lead the way for the next generation to get it up to an A and keep her there. Most people think of environmental concerns as a federal issue. Why should folks be concerned on the local level? Just walk out on your front porch. Take a deep breath, then look at your view. Is your view changing? Is it greener or are you losing your view because of development and construction? The air that you're breathing, do you have to cough a little bit or does it taste kind of stale? So the environment is affecting us all every single day. We have to move forward understanding that uh, environmentally, uh, we need to take initiatives to protect the environment now. Not only that, protect it going into the next generation. Uh, it's okay, once again, we push for development, we push for construction in the area, but it has to be cleaner because we are in a situation with our air quality that can cause us damage more so than bring any good. Rick, as a sheriff's deputy, it's no surprise to most people that public safety is high on your list of concerns as you go forward with your candidacy. Uh, if you work hard every day, uh, and most people do, I dare say, and most of the constituents, especially in District 4 and citywide, you work hard for your property. Uh, most people are building their families and want to take care of their loved ones. You have a right to have your property protected. Those things that you work hard every day should be protected, and that's why we have and we support public safety workers and their future to let them know they're valuable to us and they're an important part of the service that they provide in the city. Uh, not only that, uh, it's attractive. It makes your city more attractive. People want to be safe. Going as, if you bring businesses into the area, they want to know that their, their interests are going to be protected. Not only that, as well as their workers. Now, uh, going forward with that, let me say this. Uh, I'm uh, really pushing to have the uh, public safety center uh, built and completed. Uh, we're a little behind on taking care of those that have mental health issues and, and working in the program's rehabilitation department uh, for the sheriff's office, which is a side note. What we do there is try to work with those individuals with chronic uh, negative behavior to make them taxpayers and not individuals that constantly spend taxpayers' dollars. But going back to the point, uh, with mental health, there's a lot of people that get incarcerated that need focused treatment. 
And you're not able to do that in a jail or penile system, okay? So if we could get them into the safety center, get their needs specifically addressed, get them the focused attention they need, put them back on the streets where they're most stable, not going to hurt anyone or anybody else. Not only that, we also allow for the officers that patrol our streets. They don't go out of service for two or three hours at a time. And my opponent has talked about uh, cost and, and being uh, fiscally uh, conservative. Well, one thing that we can do to save money for taxpayers is uh, the officers don't have to drive 25 miles there and back out of the way in order to uh, uh, book somebody in. If we have the safety center where it's proposed uh, closer to downtown, uh, that on, as saves on fuel, and we usually probably are projecting to get those officers back on the street anyway, but roughly around 30 minutes. Rick, what does it mean to be a good citizen, a good neighbor? Uh, that answer is going to vary uh, according to the individual. When I think about it, I think about an individual that's going out and seeing what the community needs, uh, being a, a part of a stronger neighborhood, communicating with your neighbors, uh, being a responsible taxpayer, uh, also letting your voice be heard and letting your local legislation know what they can do to make your life better. Just being a productive member of the community at large, uh, increasing uh, needs that we have in the city, but also volunteering. Uh, any city, any society is going to be successful based on people that volunteer to help move forward. Uh, we want to be fiscally uh, sound. Uh, you got to ask for more volunteers so we can show more pride. And we are the volunteer state, and we have a University of Tennessee volunteers. So more volunteers, more community pride. You believe very strongly in mentoring. Who were your mentors? Um, well, I have to find out who would actually want to claim me as a mentee. Uh, no, uh, gosh, I, uh, just the other day, uh, I had to go visit my pastor, and he has a man-made pond out on his, um, on a, on his uh, property, and he said uh, he needed to go out and feed his fish, and uh, he threw some uh, bread out on the water, and he asked me, did you see that catfish come up? <clears throat> and I said, no, I didn't see it. He said, well, just be still. Be still and watch. Threw it out there, and I got still, and I, I got kind of calm within myself, and uh, I saw it. Uh, I take that away as uh, a, a mentoring for me. Uh, my father was a great mentor. These men who gave me lessons of life that I carry on, uh, that lesson I just spoke about with my pastor was a lesson that helped me understand if I'm going to serve people, if I just sit still and do a lot of listening, I can see how to serve them. And uh, I'm operating with that idea of going forward right now. So I can say my pastor, uh, school teacher, Sammy Settle, God uh, rest her soul. Uh, I can say uh, uh, newscasters like Ed Bradley. Uh, and even great entertainers like Morris Day, who taught me how to put together my ensembles. <clears throat> but uh, 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 I think if you really are looking for strong mentors, look for people that are productive and doing things positive and model yourself after that. You may not be able to do exactly what they do, but understand they're moving forward and are doing things beyond themselves to serve other people. So. Not surprisingly, you hold education as a vital key to a community's success. Who should be paying attention to what happens in our schools? I think, uh, obviously, parents should take an interest, but obviously your local leaders uh, here, even though Knox County Schools is uh, supported by the county, the city pays in on that. Um, we should be more productive on the voice of what we're going uh, forward with education. Uh, I'm looking into and wanting to support uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Mike Edwards on the initiative with uh, Common Core. Uh, Forty some odd states across the nation are using Common Core. Uh, the reason I do like it is because it kind of challenges young people to uh, with reasoning, ethics, and also gives them uh, the base they need to go into the workforce and on a college. Now, if an individual or business has come here, uh, Common Core, th their students can catch right back up to where they are. Uh, testing for Common Core is in 2015, so uh, we need to be proactive in working with the local community to get them uh, uh, ready for that testing in 2015 to kind of see where our children are. So, With so much school violence in the news recently, what do you believe should be done to prevent tragedies such as those we've seen in the past decade or so? 
Um, if you don't know where you come from, you can't appreciate where you're going. Look back at our history and look back at the formation of our country. Any settlement, the first thing that was built was a church. The next thing that was built, if it wasn't in a church, was a school. Uh, we built cities and communities around the school. Uh, so people are going to have to set aside political agendas, party lines, uh, in order to come together to save our children because our children, are, they're our future. And right now they're killing each other violently. And so we're letting our future die. And we're going to have to stop that right now because that's our future leaders, our future businessmen. Show them that we care about them. A lot of these young people are operating with a mind of crisis because most of them have seen murders at a very young age, 15 even five years old, six years old, and they've never received any kind of psychological care in order to process that. So we all need to come together, uh, local government, as well as institutions, to come and save our kids in the mindset that they have. So. Rick, what should we be doing to address LGBT bullying in the schools? Take it head on. Take it head on. Because these kids are being picked on daily. Uh, not only that, they're going home and not they're not able to communicate what's going on with them. Uh, and a lot of our young people are babies. Uh, what else can I call them but babies? They're just babies. Uh, they're, they're taking their own lives because they think nobody understands them. Let them know that they are cared for and they're understood, and bullying will not be tolerated. Now, when I was growing up, bullying was what my big brothers did to me as soon as my parents left the house, okay? That's a whole nother deal. <laughs> but uh, they're my biggest supporters. I love them. I'm just kidding. But uh, going forward, uh, bullying has become almost epidemic, and uh, we need to correct that by being aware, first of all, that it's happening, address it, and continue the marketing on making everybody aware that this is going on. That's another thing that's affecting our young people. As much as a safe place needs to be created for LGBT students, mm -hmm. should it not also be made safe for LGBT teachers, instructors, administrators? Well, the idea that uh, because of whatever, you, how you're living at home, how can you say they cannot teach your children? And the idea of, uh, I'm so, you know, this really bothers me in a sense that, uh, first of all, uh, an individual's personal life is their personal life. Uh, what you teach at school is what you teach at school. And you cannot have some sort of division or almost look at an individual's personal life and try to say they can't be before children. Teachers teach us the way you haven't made it anywhere in this world without a teacher. And I think uh, this issue is going a little bit too far and try to uh, class people, section people off, uh, kind of what they did in the civil rights time period with African Americans. And so I, I can't really see or understand how you can rationalize that. Our nation just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and Reverend King's I Had a Dream speech. When I began my activism, uh, I took Dr. King's words very seriously and I used them within my own uh, actions. There are some who would distance the civil rights movement from the gay community's march toward full equality. Aren't they part of the same struggle? Can they be separated? Uh, should they be separated? Uh, unfortunately, that has to be addressed. Um, I can understand the mindset of any kind of uh, separatism or being separate in our nation. First of all, let me applaud you for your activism because uh, Dr. King's words uh, have to come to life. If people don't live them and take them to action, they will never live. Second of all, uh, the gay community, aren't they citizens of Knoxville? Uh, aren't they a part of this state? Aren't they a part of this nation? So how could you separate them? So uh, in that subject matter, I look at it this way. Uh, the dream has to live through us, and we have to go for it when all of us are respected and able to provide for those that we love fairly in this nation and not be looked at for a quote-unquote lifestyle or the color of your skin, but what you produce with your actions. So that's my take on that. Rick, I want to thank you for taking time out of your campaign schedule to sit down with us here on the Lavender Table. 
in the remaining moments, I wonder if you'd do us a favor, just look toward the camera and speak directly to that casual observer and, and talk to them about what your vision is for Knoxville and why it's important uh, to vote for Rick Staples. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to be an individual that speaks less, listen more, and get more done. It's about being proactive and turning a corner and moving this city forward. Knoxville is a beautiful place to live. Uh, if you cut me open, uh, this city lives within me. Uh, I'm proud to live here. I want to serve individuals that are wanting to take this city to the next level in government. And that's only going to happen through change. And change, it needs to happen now. Choose me as your representative. I will be accountable. I will be approachable. And you'll see me everywhere because I'm always doing something. But I'm doing something positive and productive. So if you will look at TeamRickStaples.com or look at Team Rick Staples on Facebook, see what we're about, and I hope I can garner your support. And thanks for having me on the Lavender Table. Thank you again, Rick. Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you.